And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is episode 77 of Drink with Rick. It will be when we get done with it. <laughs> if we make it that far, Facebook has not been kind to me tonight. I apologize for that if you're having trouble uh, seeing this, viewing this. Of course, you can watch us. Uh, you can uh, get into the chat, participate in the chat live on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, it's Drink With Rick. The Facebook page is Drink With Rick, so you can catch it there as well. Also on YouTube. I'm on YouTube as well. At It's called Drink With Rick. That's the channel, the YouTube channel. And you can chat with me live there as well. Also on Twitch, if you follow me on Twitch, if you are, are part of Twitch, you can watch live on Twitch and participate in the live stream there as well, or in the, in the uh, chat uh, as well. We're also on, on Periscope and Twitter, so you can go to Drink with Rick at Drink with Rick on Twitter, and you can watch it live there. I don't know how many people actually watch a live video of this length on Twitter, uh, but hey, if, if that's what you, if that's your way of catching it, sure, go right ahead. It's, it's, we're there, we're there, and of course, Twitch uh, is live. And um, mm, oh yeah, our website, Drink with Rick. Go to drinkwithrick.com. That's drinkwithrick.com, and you can watch it live there. And I don't have a way to chat right there on the website itself right uh, right now until we can embed something in later on. Hopefully, we can do that sometime before the end of the year. The year, but until then, you can click on the uh, page on the or on the uh, entry for that that live stream, and then the comment box will pop up. And then you can comment in the comment box, and I'll be happy to respond in kind. Also, the the web uh, the website, of course, drinkwithrick.com. You can uh, check out the podcast. The podcast version of this show goes out Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, each Monday night, 10 p.m. sharp. Uh, and you can catch it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, let's see, where else are we? Uh, we're on TuneIn, uh, your favorite Android device, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Radio, Deezer. You can also subscribe by email and get the latest episode in your inbox as soon as it drops, as soon as it comes down. Uh, so you can go do that. And of course, if you have an RSS feed, um, you know, you know, if you have something where you can catch in, uh, the RSS feed in it, you can just, just subscribe to that and, and get it in your favorite uh, podcatcher. Anyway, so um, that is the website. So tonight we are going to be opening and drinking. I'm really excited about this wine. This was a recommendation from uh, one of my friends at the uh, at wine store, at the local wine store. Uh, you know, I, I often shop at wine store in Blakeney. And uh, we're going to be opening this bottle of wine. I'll introduce it in just a moment. Before that, let's go into the chat and say hi to everyone in the chats. Uh, Ed's with us in the chat. Ed, it's great to see you. Uh, Ed says, I'll give you one guess who I am. Hint, I'm not a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, that's good. That's good. I, there's, he's, uh, he's hinting because uh, I'm, I'm going to mention that later on in the show. Uh, Ed, just remind me. I'll... Uh, uh, Ed uh, did something this past week I, I was able to watch. I uh, actually did it last night. I was able to watch it online, and uh, it was it was a great show. Great show. I rather enjoyed it. My lovely wife, Chi, is in there, and she says, uh, we can hear you, and that's good. I'm glad you can. Um, and Ed says, but Facebook is where I tune in. Uh, Facebook is working for me now. Yeah, it's, it seems to be working for everybody fine except me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just my browser or something i don't know what's going on but it, it wasn't working now, I, i'm seeing it on my own page uh so or on my own um facebook uh, uh and on the front end but not on the back end where the videos are, are actually streaming out so that that's what's uh weird about it uh let's check uh youtube nothing going on in youtube but it is going strong it looks like uh it's it looks like we have a couple of people watching one person watching there and uh, oh yes, uh, Twitch. My uh, my son Tom Antio. He's in there. It says Arg, uh, and CM Cinder's there. Are you guys buffering? Is it buffering for you? Um, she says uh, CM Cinder says because I'm buffering or I'm nuffering a lot. I think she meant to say I'm buffering a lot. Uh, that can happen on a wireless connection. Uh, so uh, that's uh, you know that can happen sometimes on a wireless uh, connection. Uh, if it's if the stream is if there's a you know limited bandwidth, 
Uh, let's see, anything going on on Twitter? Not really on Twitter. So we're gonna we're gonna stick with the other three. I don't expect much from Twitter, <laughs> to be honest. But I'm glad you all have joined me in the in the chat. We've got a lot of birthdays to toast. We have a lot of birthdays to toast, and we have a couple of anniversaries to toast which I'm excited about, and uh, we're also going to try out this wine. Now, let me talk about this wine. This is, um, and th this is a French wine. It, it's a Castier didn't, uh, oh boy, I can't even read it, now anymore. <laughs> Castier de Nîmes, that's the, how it's pronounced, Castier de Nîmes. And uh, it's, it says Castieras, but the, the S is silent. So it's actually Castier de Nîmes. And that's, it is a French wine. This, uh, this is really interesting. The reason I got this wine tonight, and the reason that the bottle, if you noticed, the reason that a, the bottle next to me is already open, is not because of taste. I have not, honestly, I, I promise, I have not tasted this wine yet. Never tasted it before. Uh, but the reason that this bottle is already open is because it's decanted. I've had to decant this wine. This was a recommendation from my good friend Molly at a wine store. Uh, when I went in there to purchase this wine, I said, yeah, you know, do you, you have any new wines out? And she says, yes. As a matter of fact, we do. We have this Cassia Denis. And it's a French wine. And uh, this wine is actually, this is a GSM. Now, if you're not familiar with the GSM, we talked about them. Uh, before on the wine streams in the past, we've, we've talked about them quite a bit. We've had a few of them. Uh, GSM. Now, what a GSM wine is a uh, wine that's a blend of Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedre. A Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedre blend. And they can be uh, blends in different amounts of each one, but uh, generally the, the blend, whatever it is, if those three wines are in there, it's considered a GSM uh, blend. And that's what this is. I don't know how much of each is in this bottle. I haven't even tasted it yet. We're going to try it out. But uh, when I went in there to, uh, to purchase it, uh, the, Molly said to me, um, yeah, this is the new wine. I said, well, I'll take it. I'll try it out on those stream this weekend. And she said, great. She said, there is one thing. There's one thing you, you, uh, you need to know. She says, I know that you like to use uh, your Veneto um, aerator on the stream when you're pouring these wines. And I said, yes, I do. She says, well, uh, if I su can suggest, I would recommend that you not use the aerator tonight, but to uh, decant this wine. This wine is a, a wine that needs to be decanted about two hours before it's consumed. That's what she said. And uh, she said, and, and I said, well, that's gonna be a little bit harder. You know, I've got to decant it two hours before the show. And uh, I said, well, um, uh, you know, I'm used to opening these things up during the show. She says, well, you, you might want to decant this one and for for best results. And she says, what you might want to do is decant it <clears throat> and uh, pour half of it in your decanter and then put the other half in your bottle, you know, leave the other half in your bottle. And then she suggested that what, <clears throat> excuse me, she, she, she suggested that what I uh, should do is try the decanted wine first and then the one that's corked up that the air has not gotten into, then I can pour this one straight from the bottle and compare the two. And I thought, you know what? That's actually a pretty cool idea. I like that. I like that idea. And that, thanks to Molly for that. By the way, her birthday was last week. We toasted her. We're going to toast her again just for this suggestion uh, tonight. <clears throat> anyway, so that's what we're doing uh, tonight. That's why this, this bottle is already open. Full disclosure there, folks. And uh, let's see. Let's look at the bottle again. Once again, this is a Castier de Nîmes. And it is a product of, uh, of France. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit about that tonight. Uh, just, just a little bit. I'm, I pulled up some information on that off of uh, what we can read off the internet. <laughs> Uh, but here's the back end of the bottle. There's not much to it. it it's got a nice, it ha really has a nice label to it. I, and that's what really drew me to this wine. She said, well, a couple of them there. And she, she was showing me a couple of these wines. And then that was really drawn to this one just because of the uh, image of the, of the bull. And it's called uh, Mata Or, or uh, Mata Or, uh, you know, with the, without the D, as in Matador, but 
Mata Or. I got it. <laughs> but it's it's actually clever, and I really like the I like the label. I like the 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 label of the bottle. So um, this is, might be one that I'm I'm really looking forward to putting on the if it's any good. We haven't tried it yet. We've yet to try it, but we're going to do that shortly. Also tonight, I have some foods to pair it with because a good GSM. GSM uh, wines generally go pretty good with with uh, grilled meats and barbecue. I like that. Some of them are kind of a, a barbecue grill, and it's the kind of a seasoning. It's still summertime a little bit, uh, but um, this is a good wine to pair with it. I have tonight. I have a. Uh, this is a beef smoked sausage. We've had this. Bef we've had these before on the wine stream as well. And this is uh, it's barbecue, and uh, we also have a um, what is this? This is the uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> there's some other beat there. We've got the smoked turkey. I don't know. My my mind just blanked out on me just now. It just blanked out on me. What am what am I thinking of? Gee, you can help me out here. <laughs> what I just blanked out. I hate it when that happens. Anyway, we have some. Uh, Cheese. We have the Trader Joe's creamy Gouda. We have some mozzarella. We have some che cheddar. This is a medium cheddar. Some grapes. We have some crackers to to uh, help clear the palate with. It's the um, uh, brisket. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. It's the beef brisket. Is what it is. It's a barbecue beef brisket. Is what we have here for the meat. I don't know why I just blanked out there for a moment. It's been a it's been an interesting day. And, of course, we've got a little barbecue sauce to go with that. So we'll we'll try it even with the barbecue sauce, and we'll see how it pairs up with that. So any uh, anything else going on in the chat? Uh, Facebook is working for you, Ed. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I'm, I'm glad it's a relief because it, it's just not – I don't know what is going on with uh, with with uh, Facebook these days. I really, I really don't. Uh, everything else is going fine here. Uh, tw okay, Twitch and uh, Tom Antio says, my connection is fine. That's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the wines. Uh, I've got a, a pretty light show tonight, actually, because we're going to pair it with food. We're going to toast the birthdays, anniversaries, and some national days. Stick around for that because there are a couple of national days here we can have some fun with. Okay, something I want to show you from 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 that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and try the wine. And of course, we we can forgo the aerator tonight, and instead I'm going to pour it into my uh, from my decanter into my uh, my Galway genuine crystal glass from uh, Galway, and this is from Ireland. It's Irish crystal glass given to me by my employers at BuyTwoWearRadios.com. Also. This decanter, by the way, is also a Galway decanter. It goes with it's part of the set. You got the Galway decanter with the crystal glass. It is part of the same set, which um, I have never used the decanter before. This is my first time. Looking forward to it. So we're going <laughs> to look forward to a little bit much, aren't I? <laughs> so we're going to try just a little taste of the wine first. Wow, that pours so easily. I've got to be careful about that. Um, so we're going to try it. We're going to give it a little bit of a whiff. And uh, mm, very, 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 very. It smells a little sweet, though, but it's a very, very wine. I, I looked this, this wine up on online, and let me see what I have on it online. Not a whole lot on it. It's mentioned online. It, I couldn't get any pricing on it, as a matter of fact, online. Couldn't really get any pricing on it. But uh, it uh, is a genuine wine from France. And uh, some people seem to like it. It looks like it got, uh, what is it? Uh, it hasn't really been rated on some of these sites, so kind of hard to uh, hard to get a fix on this. So we're going to be trying. This, by the way, this is, uh, once again, this isn't just the wine. If you look down at the bottom of the label, it says special edition. This is, uh, uh, or it's a limited edition. I'm sorry, not special edition, but uh, it says edition limite, limite which means that this is a limited edition of this wine. So there's not a whole lot of these out there. I can tell you what I paid for it before we go into the wine. I can tell you what I paid for it at a wine store. I paid, you'd expect a, a limited edition wine might be really, really expensive, and some of them are. This particular one I paid, uh, the Matador, 
$14.99. It's $14.99 uh, for this 750 milliliter bottle. And you know what? Uh, looking at, uh, at looking at the wine again, I don't think I saw in any. Uh, I think the the amount of ah oh boy, <laughs> this is uh, it's a red dry wine, 14.5 percent alcohol by volume. That's 14. 0.5% alcohol by volume in this 750 milliliter bottle. So uh, the alcohol content's fairly high here. So we'll see see how it, how it works out. Fortunately, I have some food to pair it with and plenty of water to drink along the way to help kind of keep that uh, keep that under control. And I won't overdo the wine. Anyway, let me uh, give it a whiff, another whiff, because I did smell some fruits in there. Very fruity. A lot of black fruit it smelled like. Let me see what else we got here. Yeah, a lot of black fruit, a lot of blackberry, and and uh, yeah, a lot of blackberry in there, and a little bit of. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Let me give it a taste. Hmm. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. A little blackberry, but a lot of other things in here. Kind of peppery. Uh, chocolate. That's uh, I don't know if I got that right, but it sure I sure tasted some chocolate in this one. Some some chocolate notes in this wine. Actually, pretty pretty good. I'm gonna have to have another another taste of this. Wow, but it, it uh, really it was kind of bold. It was kind of a bold taste, but it went down uh, fairly fairly smoothly. Um, I would say. Although there are some tannins, it's got a long aftertaste, long finish, and there, yeah, and so there's a lot of tannin in this wine. Sweet on the fr um, sweet on the tongue, but uh, kind of peppery, and a little oaky. It's 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 somewhat oaky, and yeah, there are some some chocolate notes in this. And it, once again, it is kind of a bold a wine. This is a full-bodied wine. This is fairly full body, which is not too surprising for a GSM blend. This is rather uh, this is rather full-bodied, and uh, it's it yeah it is somewhat tannic. It's very dry. This is and they weren't kidding when it said on the front it's a dry wine. This is a very dry wine, and it is somewhat acidic. Uh, now this is th these are some good good things because for if you like dry acidic wines, uh, this is a good thing because for what we're going to pair it with, because this should pair pretty well with the choices of meats that we have tonight. I'm looking forward to trying that out. So, uh, wow, I'm gonna get another taste of this. Ooh. Yeah, chocolate kind of tends to come out quite a bit in this wine, um, interesting. Mm. I, I like the the taste, a little bit of yeah. Some it, it is peppery. It is peppery. I I, I would say also that uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like just to, to say that that, that that maybe more like a bell pepper in the swine, kind of uh, kind of uh, that kind of thing, and um, but it's it's kind of oaky. It, it is pretty oaky, but and nothing nothing wrong with that really. If you like oaky wines. That's good. So let's pair it with some food. Before we get to that, let me go to the chat. Anything going on in the chat? Uh, let's see. Uh, the, the chat is really... Uh, let's see here. There we go. I'm having to go to different to different pages for the chat because of the, uh, the, the fact that Facebook isn't showing me, inherently showing me the video on my pre-stream here. So uh, that's kind of throwing me off a little bit. Nothing going on on uh, YouTube, pretty much. And uh, let's see, check out Twitch. Twitch is kind of twi quiet. <laughs> so I sound like Elmer Fudd. I haven't had enough of this wine yet. It's kind of quiet tonight. <laughs> um, so... Um, I, so far, I, I like the wine. Very. This is a very full-bodied wine, but it's 
this is kind of um, I don't know if I could drink a whole lot of this. I, I uh, you know I, I this is one of those wines that would probably give me a little bit of a of a, a red wine headache, but just because the alcohol content's so high in this wine and because it it is it's it's kind of dense it, it, it is, but it's that's not a bad thing. Uh, this is something you definitely want to have with food. I, I don't know that I'd want to to have this just as a. This is not really one of those light um, hors d'oeuvre kind of wines. It's not like something that you'd want to to just uh, open up at a party or something and just have people drink at the party. This is really more of a dinner wine. You want to have this with a meal. That that's really this is really the kind of wine for that. And a lot of French wines are that way. You know, they're, they're the kind of wines that you really, they're meant to be had with food and not really on their own. Well, if you could, if you want, but they're really, they're really intended to be had with food. So let's try it with some food right now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try it with the, the smoked sausage, the smoked beef sausage. Before it gets too cold. And I love this smoked sweet, uh, this smoked beef sausage mm. great mm. Mm. it really enhances this wine really enhances the smoky sausage flavor of this of this smoked sausage it really enhances the flavor of it I like that in fact I'm gonna have a little bit more and just because I can very good. This smoked beef sausage, actually this whole platter of meat comes from a place called the Q Shack, which is in Charlotte, in the Providence area in, in Charlotte. The, um, the founder of it used to be one of our neighbors. He since sold the business, but they're continuing the tradition of some fine barbecue. Mm. I like it. I like it with the smoked sausage. Pretty good. It, it, it very, um, I, I like it. I'm going to have a little water to clear the palate with. I have a, a lot more water to clear the palate with. And then let's try it with the beef brisket. I don't know why that slipped. You know, for some reason lately when I see beef brisket, it just kind of, I think of something else. I don't think, I, I think of uh, other types of meats. And for some reason, brisket just doesn't stay in my brain. But uh, beef brisket, this is smoked beef brisket also from the Q Shack in uh, Providence. I'm not Providence, in, uh, in Charlotte. Mm. It's good. It's good beef brisket, by the way. Mm. I like that. Although I have to chew it a, a little bit. Mm. But it's good. Mm. Once again, very good. I like that pairing. It really, the smokiness and the tannins, or should I say the oakiness, the oakiness and the tannin really um, draws out more of the smoky barbecue flavor in that meat. So I do like that. I do like that very much. Clear the palate again. I have one more meat to try it with. <clears throat> one more meat to try it with, and this would be the smoked turkey, also from Q Shack. And uh, did I say promenade? Promenade. I'm sorry. You're right. Promenade. Uh, <clears throat> the Q Shack is located in, in the Promenade area in Charlotte, not Providence. That's a different, different area. <clears throat> Anyway, let's try the smoked turkey with it. Mm. And this turkey, I had a little bit of this for dinner tonight. It was very good. Smoked turkey. Mm. Smoked barbecue turkey. Mm. And um, try it with the wine. You need a little bit more wine. And this is a fine decanter, by the way. I like the decanter. Mm. Turkey's a little different. That's not the best pairing because turkey is basically a white meat. I was kind of hoping the, the fact that it was a smoked turkey 
would be fine with it. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's okay. Okay. It's okay with the smoked turkey, but I like it better. I prefer it better with the uh, with the other two meats, with the red meats, the uh, smoked sausage and the beef brisket. <clears throat> I remembered how to. I remember to say it this time. So uh, we're going to try it with cheeses in just a moment. Before we do, let me get back to the chat for, for just a moment or two. And um, kind of chats are kind of quiet at the moment. I know the chats pick up. They get pretty lively, especially when the Twitch crowd gets in after about 11 o'clock. We're trying not to keep this too late, folks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, try it. We, we've been going over two hours, and I can't really do that tonight, to be honest. And so let's try it with the, uh, actually what I have here is not mozzarella, it is, uh, what do we have here for this cheese? It looks like, gee, maybe you can help me out here, because my lovely wife, she prepared this platter for me, by the way, it's a really, really nice platter. Uh, this is the brie, it's the brie, that's what it is. So we're having this with a brie. I don't know about the brie, but we'll give it a try. And it's a fine brie, by the way. From This is actually from Trader Joe's, I believe. Uh, right, Chi? Very nice brie. Mm. Oh. Actually, this pairs very nicely with the brie. It makes the, the, the lightness of the, of the brie and, and, the, the, and the wine, the tannin and the wine, they have kind of a little bit of a silkiness uh, to, to the pairing, to the two of them. Uh, they complement each other, I think, a little bit. I like that with the brie. Let's try I'm going to clear the pound again a little bit. We're going to try it with the cheddar. Now, as I said before many times on the, on the stream, cheddar, it's kind of hard to, to, to screw up a cheddar wine combination because cheddar, it seems to go well with a lot of different wines. It's just because it's you know it's the it's a very popular cheese and and uh, it's it's kind of standard I guess in a way and um, uh, so it goes well with a lot of a lot of wines. Let's see about this one. And it's a nice cheddar by the way. Very nice cheddar. Hmm. I like it. I like it with the cheddar. Very good. And my, uh, my wife, she says, you've got brie, gouda, and cheddar. Thank you. Amy. I appreciate that. Um, that's, uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm glad my wife is here. I don't know what I did without, without uh, my wife. I really wouldn't. She keeps me, she keeps me, uh, <clears throat> she keeps me grounded. In a lot of ways, she, she really does. She keeps me grounded and, and, and together. So we're going to try it with the tr Trader Joe's Creamy Gouda. We've had this for almost two dozen wines now. We have not had a miss yet. We had almost a near miss, but the cheese actually saved the wine. And I can tell you that was, I think that was the, uh, I think that was the Waccamaw. <laughs> cheese saved the wine on that one, I think. But uh, this should be okay with it. We'll find out. Creamy Gouda, or double cream Gouda, as I call it. Very nice. Love this Gouda. It's one of my favorite cheeses. Mm. A little on the smoky side with that, that combination, but I tell you what, it's uh, it's good. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have another winner. We have another winner. Now, there is one more thing I did want to do. I want to try and see if maybe I could fix the, the turkey a little bit by dipping it in some barbecue sauce. In barbecue. All right, we'll put some barbecue sauce in this. I, I really need to... Uh, let, me, let me refill the wine glass. We're going to try it with the barbecue sauce and see if that makes a difference. See if that helps it any. So we'll try it. Here it is dipped in some, uh, th this is a um, tomato-based 
uh, barbecue sauce, right, Gene? Yeah. Mm. Very good. I'll try it with this. Mm. It's good turkey, by the way. You know what? I like it better with the barbecue sauce. The turkey, I think actually the barbecue sauce helps the turkey in, in terms of the pairing it with the wine. It, this is not a wine I would pair with those, really, with, with turkey barbecue sauce. But the barbecue sauce makes it, it helps it, makes it, a little, makes it a little bit better. I think so. <clears throat> Just my opinion. What do I know? I am not a sommelier, as I tell everyone every week. I'm not a sommelier. I'm not a wine expert. I am an every man that likes to drink wine, as 99.99% of us are. Uh, just every people that just like to drink wine. We know what we like. We don't. We know what we don't like, and that's the way I approach recommendations on wine. That's uh, the way I promote uh, or approach my wine tasting. Not as an expert on wine, because I think being an expert, and I'm not putting down the experts per se. I'm just saying I think the experts. Um, they, they, I think their opinions of wine can be a little overrated. And the reason is because, yes, they have developed this, these fine tastes for wine. But, you know, once again, it's subjective. It really is subjective. What one, what, uh, say, the sommeliers might like, or what actually what some might like, some others might not like. But for what some of them might like, some others, uh, regular people like you and me, regular people, <laughs> uh, might not be our cup of tea my, or glass of wine. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I kind of take a lot. Now, and, and the reason I say that, and it's not, once again, it's not putting down all the experts, okay? Because they, they, they spend years and years, they've spent a lifetime developing their palates for this, and they spend a, a pretty much a lifetime or years and years studying about wine, knowing everything they can about wine. Um, you know what? At the end of the day, though, I can sit down, and I have before, with some some of these people who are very, very, very knowledgeable, much more knowledgeable about wine than I am. And they can tell me all kinds of things about wine, but at the end of the day, my take on it is, yeah, but does it taste good to me? Does Do I like this wine? Do I like it? And um, I have had recommendations before from people who are experts at wine and have recommended wines to me that I didn't particularly care for too much. It, did, it just not just did not fit well with my palate. I, I just didn't like them. And, and once again, it's not against the, 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 the experts, the sommeliers, and, 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 and the sommeliers uh, or, or any of those, those people that, that, uh, that study for years and years. But you know what? I think it's, it's sort of like the old adage that beauty is in, in the eye of the beholder. And of course, there are people that will drink two buck chuck and whatever that thing is over there, Oak Creek, and uh, Mad Dog, <laughs> and things like that. And that's what they prefer because that's what they like. More, you know, hey, if that's what you like, go with it. Um, I'm, I don't. That's not for me. That's not my thing. But um, there are some people that's what they like. That's what they prefer. And then there are people like my, my dad, my late father, who uh, who never met a bottle of wine he didn't like to drink. <laughs> there are stories about that, and I'm not going there right now. But, uh, you know, the thing is, even if I like this wine, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like it. Your taste might be different. You might prefer whites or rosés. You might prefer sweet reds opposed to dry reds. You know, everyone has a different taste. So... Just because a sommelier says, hey, I don't like this wine, uh, don't drink it, I don't recommend it, or do drink it, I do recommend it, doesn't mean that that's the last word on the wine. That's just his opinion. His professional opinion, of course, but his opinion on the wine. So, um, I say, don't be intimidated by that. Don't be intimidated by all that. You, you, you shouldn't. Um, that's that's not you know it's not healthy to be, to be intimidated by all the so-called experts. And once again, I am not an expert. Okay, I just like I know what I like to drink. 
Okay. And hopefully you might like to drink it too. Just a regular guy likes to drink wine. So, um, <clears throat> let's check the chat. I'm checking the chats here. Nothing else uh, going on too much in the chat. So I'll tell you what, but, but before we get, uh, well, what's next on the list? Oh yes, we paired it with food. I told you what I thought about it. We're going to have the final review at the end of the show. But I tell you what, it is time to toast the birthdays and the anniversaries. And boy, do we have a lot of birthdays to toast. And a couple of them for last week, but I wanted to toast them again because, well, um, I, I just I just want to toast them again because we're good friends. The first one I'd like to toast uh, to start off with is uh, my good friend Molly. Uh, Molly, who, whose birthday was um, on the 15th. We did toast her last week, by the way. She missed the show, but and when I talked to her at my store, uh, I told her, well, you know what? I'll toast you again. And the, well, you know, one of the reasons I want to toast her again because it was her recommendation for me to do this. She, she, it was her suggestion that I decant this wine for a couple of hours first. And you know what? I think, I really think it helps. And we haven't tried the, the one in the bottle yet. But, uh, and we're going to do that. I'm going to have to take another glass. I'll have to take a fresh glass and, and try that with. But uh, I'll go with her recommendation, and I will say, Happy birthday, Molly. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to you. Here's my good friend, Molly. And uh, someone else I want to toast from last week that I did toast last week, but I want to toast again, was my good friend, Tom Panko. And I told you about Tom before. I worked with him at WFL for many years, and um, Tom actually helped us uh, put this, help us, uh, he gave us some seed money to help us with the, uh, uh, with our uh, software business that we started, that my, my friends uh, Pete Moltak and, and Jeff Pierce and I started while we were working there, it was kind of a side business, and he invested some money in it, and i uh, always be appreciative of him for, for that, but anyway, Tom, here's to your birthday, to Tom Ace Panko, happy birthday. His birthday was Friday, this past Friday, by the way. Happy, happy birthday. He's also a ham, like I am, ham radio operator. Has been for many years. Okay, so uh, catching up with the, uh, more, uh, with the current birthdays, I also want to give a special birthday toast to my good friend and uh, also my employer, my boss, one of my employers, Danny. Danny, who... Um, I've worked with, it's going to be, uh, I'm coming up on my 10-year anniversary at Buy Two Way Radios at, at Crook Adventures, the parent company of BuyTwoWayRadios.com. Uh, and um, and my 10-year my anniversary would show will be next month in October. And I've gotten to know Danny. Actually, Danny, I, I, uh, when I first met him, and also Anthony, um, my boss is there, um, I, I really liked them both a lot. They were just, there was just something about both of them that I, I thought they were just really cool people. And um, Anthony is uh, a really cool guy. He's also very, very funny. I, I, I enjoy Anthony. I miss him, too, because I haven't seen him. I mean, we've, we, we get together and we're doing the uh, two-way radio show podcast, but, uh, and we're going to be do, recording another episode this week. But, um, but I'm missing Anthony because uh, he's the kind of person who just make everybody laugh. He's 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 just he's a lot of fun, and um, Danny is a very very smart guy. He's he is really uh, uh, the brains behind uh, a lot of what we do, and um, he's very very talented. He's very ta- he's, he has a lot of talents in a lot of different directions. I mean programming and. Um, yeah, kind of a, a jack of all trades in in a sense. Uh, able to pick up new things quickly and, and learn them and, and things like that. But um, uh, you know, Danny became a good friend of mine very quickly, very early on, because he uh, and I shared a lot of the. Um, first of all, we shared a lot of the same business ethics and work ethics and, and values, which is important. But but from a personal level. He's just uh, he's just become a good friend and, and just uh, uh, he's just a really cool person to 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 talk to and um, uh, really I I always enjoy just hanging out with him and and just uh, uh, just just being around him he's, he's just uh, an awesome guy uh, he's also also he's very he's he's rather soft spoken he's very very likable. 
Uh, he, he just has a, a personality where you, you meet him and right away you, you just like him. He's just that, that cool. Anyway, uh, here's to Danny. His uh, birthday was uh, Thursday on the 17th. And I want to say happy birthday to Danny Feemster, my good friend, my employer. But uh, uh, happy birthday to you. I'm going to toast him again, too, just because I can. And uh, here's to Danny. Happy birthday to you, Danny. And may you have many, 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 many more. Let's see. Uh, getting on to the birthdays. Ah, oh, my good friend Matt. Matt Kennedy. Matthew Kennedy. Matt uh, and I also go way back to Channel 3. There's several WOFL alumni uh, on here on this list. Matthew Kennedy is uh, someone else who I worked with for many uh, years at WFL. He worked in the production department. He's part of the production team there at uh, Skyline Teleproductions and uh, WFL. And uh, I always thought he was such a cool guy. He was just a, I always thought him as just a cool, he, he was a cool laid back guy and, and, and uh, uh, very smart, but uh, uh, he and I have been, he and I have been friends uh, on Facebook also for many years. And I tell you, he's, he's aged well and <laughs> better than me, I should say. And uh, he's just, uh, He's, he's very, very much uh, an active person, outdoor person, kind of the opposite of me where I sit down at the computer all day. But he uh, is, is really such a cool guy. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to you, Matt. And uh, it's an honor being your friend. Happy birthday to you. And may you have many, many, many more. And also another good friend of mine. His birthday's on the same day. Now, Matt's birthday is coming up on Tuesday. It's coming Tuesday on the 22nd. Uh, we have another person who's having a birthday on Tuesday the 22nd and also another alumnus of, of uh, Channel 35 and another really good friend of mine. And our families have been good friends for many years as well. And uh, <clears throat> he was there when both my kids were born. And... Uh, Watch his son pretty much grow up. This is from my good friend Charles, Charles Rudd. Charles, uh, he, he and I worked together at WFL for a long time, and we had a lot of fun together. We actually, I talked about Charles many times before, and he's been in the chat uh, many times before. But Charles and I have done a number of things together. We, uh, we've been on a couple of hikes together, uh, a couple of weekend hikes. Uh, we took a, a couple of memorable, one particular mem particularly memorable hike in the Ocala National Forest <clears throat> one weekend when it decided to really, really um, pour. It was supposed to be nice all weekend. It turned out to be really, really drenching wet rain. I think they, I, I don't know if they had a, a tropical storm or something, or I don't remember what, it, what the deal was, but it was, it just dumped so much rain the whole weekend. And I think he was a little worried that, oh, well, you know, I'll never go on a, on a hiking trip with him again. And I'll just be miserable and everything because, because, uh, because of all the rain. I remember standing out in the middle of a, of a, of a clearing uh, at one point when it was, it was just pouring rain. And we, we stopped to eat a lunch, you know, basically we just opened up a can of, of something. I think we had some rice or something we were opened up. And we were just eating it out in the middle of the rain. And I, he was kind of looking at me, and I know what he was thinking. He was, saying, he was thinking, you know, he's not – and he, he actually said this to me. He says, oh, I was really afraid that you weren't ever going to go on another <laughs> camping trip with me again because it was just such a miserable weekend. And I told him, I said, no, I, I had the greatest time. It was just, <clears throat> it was an awesome time. I mean, we were, you know, we were just slogging through all this muck and, and swamp and everything for a couple of days, trudging. And, you know, yeah, normally I would think, eh, that's not the kind of thing I'd want to do on a weekend. But I had a great time. It was an awesome experience. It was a great time. And... Um, I think it kind of shocked him because <laughs> he wasn't expecting that, but and, and he thought he probably thought I was lying to him too. But uh, no, I had an awesome. It was just an, a great, awesome experience for that whole weekend, and I, just, I mean we were really roughing it, and uh, to, to the nth degree. And I will always be grateful uh, to to Charles for for uh, giving me that experience. 
So Charles, here's to you, my good friend, Charles Rudd. I'll touch you again. Happy, happy birthday. Here's to Charles. I mean, you have many more. We played a lot of games together, too. It was a time when um, I told my kids, this raises their eyebrows, and they said, you were into video games? You know, you old fogey, you. <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, I went through that period, too. I even played Dungeons and Dragons. And Ed, you remember that? Because I think you played with us, too. We, we were, I think there was a time we were all getting together playing Dungeons and Dragons, D&D, <clears throat> back in our younger days. Uh, Ed and Anthony, who's in the chat with us, I think you remember that, right? Got together with a few of our, our friends, and uh, I think um, Bobby Summercamp and a few people like that. We all get, get together on Saturday nights and do these uh, on the weekends. We do a whole weekend thing where we do these campaigns. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, my kids go like you play Dungeons and Dragons. Well, yeah, it was around. We were, you know, I was young too. I I was young, at your age. Uh, I wasn't always old and bald and 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 uh, uh, you know, a cranky old man. <clears throat> you know, off my lawn, you kids. You know that kind of thing. Uh, I was. Uh, I I had my I had my uh, fun fun days. I had my early youth. And um, I, you know, I played video games, and one of the games that Charles and I played when we were young were, were uh, uh, you know, back in the day, when we were, uh, I'll say young, when we were in, in our late 20s, early 30s, I guess, um, and we were playing um, uh, a couple of board games, uh, and uh, we also played, uh, we all got, also got into Red Alert, uh, the Command & Conquer uh, games and things like that, uh, video games back then, so yeah, went through my Went through my phase of that. Had a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, let's see. Someone else who is having a birthday. Let me check the chat real quick before we go to the birthdays. Anything going on in the chat? Okay. Um, another birthday I would like to toast. <clears throat> another good friend of mine is uh, Chris. Another good cr friend, uh, Chris. Chris Kremitzos, who is a uh, founder of, the, the, of PodFest. Uh, and uh, we, of course, if you, you listen or watch the, the show uh, for any uh, length of time, you, you know that uh, I, my son and I do, we are podcasters and we do attend PodFest every year in, down in Orlando. And Chris is one of the uh, founders and, and uh, organizers of PodFest. And they just recently, just uh, like last month, they recently did their uh, PodFest Global Summit, which was a virtual, excuse me, a virtual online summit, made the Guinness Book of World Records, the Guinness Book of World Records for being the largest online, uh, because it was global, so the largest online uh Orga, uh, organized event uh, in the world <clears throat> in history. So they made the Guinness Book of World Records for that. We were part of it. Tom, you know, I, I was uh, I got in there and I was part of it. Uh, uh, Tommy and I are, are are fairly actively involved in, in a lot of that sort of thing. Co uh, Tommy couldn't be in it because he was actually at Appalachian State at the time. Uh, and so he, he couldn't couldn't actively participate, but uh, but I was there. Anyway, uh, so Chris uh, Chris has his wife and his uh, young children. Uh, Chris actually he I think about a year to a couple of years ago he delivered a baby on his own. He delivered his his one of his children. Uh, they couldn't get to the doctor in time, so he he wound up doing the delivery. So that was. Uh, I, I'll say I have to toast you just for that. And I did toast you last year, too. But uh, anyway, Chris, a lot of accomplishments. Uh, Chris has done a, has, has, has accomplished a lot. Of course, Chris is also, I'm pointing to, to a book that isn't there, of course. Chris is also author of uh, the book uh, Start Ugly. Start Ugly, which we've given away a couple copies. Ed, you actually want a copy. You want a copy of, of Start Ugly uh, not too long ago. And we had uh, I forgot who won the first one, but we've we've uh, we've given away a couple of copies. We might give away another one, but uh, Chris wrote the book Start Ugly, um, and 
he's accomplished a lot of things in his life, and he's still young. He still has a long way to go. So it's going to be it's going to be really really interesting to follow along with Chris and see what he does in the next few years. Uh, Chris, this is for you. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to my good friend Chris Kermitzos. And I'll touch you again too, just because I can. May you have many 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 more. Hope the wife and kids are doing fine. Here's to you. Happy birthday. To Chris Kremitzos. Um, oh, yes, another one. Now, Chris's birthday is uh, on the 23rd. That's his coming Wednesday. It's on the 23rd. Another person who's having a birthday on the 23rd is my friend Angelo, Angelo Mandato. Angelo is part of the Blueberry team at Blueberry.com. Um, and I've... Uh, I, I I actually got to meet him at PodFest for the first time, face-to-face for the first time at uh, this past year's PodFest. But <clears throat> I've known Angelo for more longer than that. She said we've never really met face-to-face until then. But uh, Angelo was was one of the first, I think he was the first, actually full employ, full-time employee at Blueberry.com. Uh, and he and a podcaster in his own right as well. But that's how I met him was when I was part of uh, when I did the Force Field podcast and I was part of the uh, Tech Podcast Network um, uh, group there. So we would, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to Chris. Uh, to Chris, excuse me. I've talked to Angelo. I've talked to Chris too. I've talked to Angelo a number of times. Uh, here anyway, Angelo, your birthday is Wednesday on the 23rd also, along with Chris's uh, Kremitzos birthday, same day. Here's to you, Angelo. Happy birthday. I'll tell you again. Happy birthday to my friend Angelo Mandato. <clears throat> Someone else who I've actually not had an, an opportunity to talk to, he was always such a cool guy. And another alumnus at WOFL. If anyone else at WOFL is is, uh, is watching you, you know who I'm talking about. And I'm talking about Bill Pyle, my good friend Bill Pyle. Uh, Bill, you know, I haven't heard from Bill much uh, recently. I don't think he's uh, doing a lot on Facebook these days. But uh, he was always such a cool guy. And it was always so much fun going and, and, and talking to him and just hanging around him. Uh, uh, and he worked in the... Uh, he was one of the on-air switchers at uh, WFL. He did a lot of other things too, as well, but uh, and, and worked in engineering and that sort of thing. But uh, Bill was in the in the um, in master control a lot, and I'd go in there and just talk to Bill lots of times. He was always such a fun guy to talk to, really just just the nicest guy and a fun guy to talk to. Anyway, Bill, here's to you. Happy birthday. Toast to you again too. I still have plenty of wine. Happy birthday, Bill. Here's to you. I think that's got it for the birthdays, but uh, I do want to mention a couple of anniversaries. Anniversaries. Um, first anniversary is from my good friend Rob, Rob Greenlee. And I've mentioned Rob many times on the, on the show in the past. Rob, who, who I first met when he was working for Microsoft Zune, um, and... And the first time I actually ever really interacted with him, talked to him, was was uh, I was having some some trouble getting my podcast into the Zoom marketplace, and uh, <clears throat> he was so nice. He was just so nice. He he jump, just jumped in there right away, and and um, I I'd actually contacted uh, Todd Todd Cocker, another good friend of mine, and said, you know, I'm having a little trouble. He said, Todd says, go talk to Rob. And Rob will help you. So I, I call you know I called up. <clears throat> I think I emailed him first, and then I, I, I don't know, I don't remember if I called him too or if I just emailed him. Uh, talked to Rob, and uh, and he was just so nice, and he just had it done just like that, had it taken care of just like that. And I always thought, you know, I, and I have, I've interacted with Rob uh, a number of times over the years, listened to some of his podcasts because he's a he's also a podcaster, but he, um, I never got really. I always he was always one of those other podcasters, one of those other people that I always wanted to meet in person. And I finally got the opportunity to do it a few years ago at uh, the first podfest I went to. And, uh, uh, you know, it was just, it was just such a pleasure to meet Rob. And he was just, he's such a, 
he's a very laid back, cool guy. Uh, just a lot of fun to talk to. And every time I talk to him, it's just, you know, like the last podcast, we just sat around and talked about some stuff for a while. And, and uh, it's just, I, he, he gave me a couple of insights and some things that, uh, that have been that have been sticking with me, and um, also he is part. He and Todd, he and Todd Cochran do the new media show together, which uh, I I regularly get in and watch every uh, every weekend. They do it a couple times a week, and um, Rob and Todd uh, they're both very very knowledgeable about the business. Rob's currently working at Libsyn. Uh, he's been there for a while. And uh, uh, very knowledgeable. He, he, he knows the industry inside and out. He knows the business. Uh, he's also very, like Todd is, he's also very uh, indie podcaster focused. Um, Rob, he's just a cool guy all the way around. Anyway, I just want to say hap, uh, happy anniversary to you, Rob, because it is Rob's 16th, 16th anniversary as a podcaster. 16 years ago, he started um, 16 years ago, Tuesday, as a matter of fact, this past Tuesday on the 9-15, he started uh, his podcast uh, journey and his uh, podcasting career, I should say. Uh, 16 years for Rob. Happy anniversary to you, Rob. Excellent. 16 years. Here's to you. To Rob Greenlee. I'll toast you again. So Rob Greenlee, 16 years as a podcaster. Also, I want to do a, another uh, anniversary shout-out to Blueberry, the folks at Blueberry.com, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. My son hosts uh, with Blueberry. They've been around, and it's also, that was um, a company started by Todd Cochran, a good friend of mine who I've mentioned many, many times, and I just mentioned a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact. Uh, Blueberry uh, hosting company and, and and so much more. They do a lot of things. But Blueberry uh, just celebrated this past Tuesday. Also, just as kind of coincidence, uh, Rob's uh, 16 year uh, anniversary podcasting was on Tuesday, and it was also Blueberry's 15 year anniversary. 15 year anniversary. 15 year anniversary of the Blueberry uh, platform, the Blueberry team. And, of course, um, Angelo is part of the Blue, uh, who I toasted earlier for his birthday. Uh, Angelo Monato is part of the Blueberry team. I think I did mention that uh, he was the first full-time employee for Blueberry, as a matter of fact. Here's to 15 years uh, for the Blueberry team. Great job, folks. Here's to you. Happy anniversary. It's for the fo good folks at Blueberry. And they take real good care of my son Tommy, by the way. As a matter of fact, Tommy's been, uh, he had a little trouble with, uh, with his podcast on uh, uh, Apple Podcasts a couple weeks ago. And he, he uh, called Tech Support, he emailed Tech Support, called him, and uh, talked to a couple of guys there at Tech Support. And they, they really helped, they were very, very instrumental in helping him sort it all out. And they got it all taken care of for him. Didn't have to do some of that, really, but uh, they were really, really good at it. And, uh, uh, they went they went above beyond so uh, that that was much much appreciated okay I guess that does it for the anniversaries and the uh, and the birthdays this week Ed says uh, Bobby Summercamp yes that's right my good friend Bobby Summercamp our good friend Bobby Summercamp oh man that was so uh, you know I, I lost touch with Bobby so many years I don't even know if he's still with us uh, to be honest, Ed, I, I really don't. I hope he is. If he is somewhere, uh, Bobby, uh, you know what? Here's to you, Bobby. If you're with us somewhere, good friend, a really, really nice guy. Very, very talented. Very talented artist. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. What, what do we have next? Oh, yes, it's time for the National Days. Any, first of all, anything in uh, Twitch going on yet? Uh, Madalona San Jr. Is, is that, am I pronouncing that right? Madalona San Jr. is with us in the chat. It's great to see you in the chat um, on Twitch. Minnesota, uh, Minnesota Lynn Jr. Uh, yeah, the wine started kicking. <laughs> I'm glad to see you here anyway. Uh, tell me what you're drinking or what you're not drinking or what you'd like to be drinking or what you'd like to see me drinking. And if I can afford to buy a bottle of it, I'll see if I can drink it too. Um. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, National Days. Okay, you'll have. We're going to have some fun with some National Days. We better uh, have some fun quick because it's uh, it's getting kind of late. 
Uh, national days. Where were we? Where are the national days? What do I do with them? Okay, here they are. Okay, we have a few national days. Um, September 18th was National Hug Your Boss Day. I'm already, I've already uh, given my boss a couple of toasts. I'll give him one more toast. This is my boss. Um, what else we have here? Um, September 19th, today, that's September 19th for 54 more minutes. It's National Butterscotch Pudding Day. Do you like butterscotch pudding? I love butterscotch pudding. In fact, it's my favorite, well, besides banana pudding, I love banana pudding. Banana pudding is number one on my list. A good banana pudding. I've had some bad ones, but a good banana pudding. You know, the ones with the vanilla wafers in it and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> Oh, man, it's just awesome. But next to banana pudding, I love butterscotch pudding. A good butterscotch pudding. Here's to National Butterscotch Pudding Day. I'll drink to that. It's also National Dance Day. I like to dance sometimes. Uh, National Dance Day. It's also National Gymnastics Day. And it's Boys and Girls Club Day for kids. That's the third Saturday in September. Okay, well, there's a little... Okay, Boys and Girls Club Day for kids. Now, I can see the Boys and Girls Club Day. I'm, I'm all for that, 100%. I'm on board. Boys and Girls Club Day for kids, I'm a little confused with because isn't that what the Boys and Girls Club is? Aren't they kids? I mean, <clears throat> Boys and Girls Club Day for kids. I'm just reading this. I'm reading this directly from nationaldaycalendar.com. Nationaldaycalendar.com. The CEO of NationalDayCalendar.com is my friend Marlo Anderson. You can go visit it. A lot of places use uh, his, his website as a source, a direct source for National Days. Great place, a, a great repository of National Days. National, let's see, Boys and Girls Club Day for Kids. Is there a Boys and Girls Club Day for anything else? For kids, okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, I'll go with that. Boys and Girls Club Day for Kids. It's also Puppy Mill Awareness Day, the third Saturday in September. Be aware of the puppy mills. Please uh, be aware of the puppy mills. And the thing about puppy mills is that some of them are not run very well and uh, they are not very healthy or are uh, very... Uh, do I want to go down this lane? Uh, for puppy mills... Just cranking out the puppies, you know. I I don't I don't know. It, it's uh, puppy. Well, you need to be aware of puppy mill well awareness day. Okay, uh, some of them are run very very poorly. I'll just say that some of them are not run very well at all. Uh, some of them are not, uh, I'll say, regulated of any to any degree. So, you know, buying a, your puppy from a buying your dog from a puppy mill. That's uh, that's your choice, uh, but uh, but you want to be aware of of puppy mills. Responsible Dog Ownership Day. That's also the third Saturday in September. Okay, see you got Puppy Mill and Awareness Day and Responsible Dog Ownership Day hand in hand right there. And that's what I'm getting to. to. Uh, if you're a responsible dog owner, you want to be aware of puppy mills. Okay. So here's the Responsible Dog Ownership Day. My son has a dog. He he follows me everywhere. He's like my little shadow. Uh, it's always right there. Uh, when Tommy's not around, especially, he's always right there at my feet. Uh, but here's to, to uh, dogs are great. Uh, they're awesome. You know, the thing about dogs, uh, let me toast that first, okay? The thing about dogs is that they could teach us so much about unconditional love and about uh, just just being able to be tolerant, be tolerant of everybody. Because the thing is about a good, uh, faithful dog, and faithfulness, I guess that's the word I'm looking for, faithfulness. The thing about a dog is that you could, uh, <clears throat> you don't want to treat your dog poorly. Never treat your dog poorly. But you can forget about your dog and do that. I, I, there have been times when I let the dog out and then I forgot to let him back in. He's been standing out there patiently waiting. And it was just because I completely forgot. I was in the morning. I let him out in the morning. Go get a cup of coffee. I'm drinking a cup of coffee. Oh, i got to get up to work and, and, and uh, 
uh, start working. And then all of a sudden I hear this roof, roof, roof outside, and, uh, or my wife will, and say, uh, or usually it's like, gee, she'll say, roof, 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 when you hear it out the door. And say, Is Cosmo outside? Did you leave him outside? Oh, yeah, I forgot to bring him in. So I open the door and he comes in, but he's standing there on his tail. His, is he mad at me? No. Is he upset? Is he disappointed or dejected? No. His little tail's looking, look, you know, he's looking right at me. His little tail's just wagging, wagging, just happy to see me. Um, that's faithfulness. That's devotion. That's unconditional love. And I'll tell him, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to forget you. But uh, to, to, to be able to, to have that kind of, of attitude where somebody spit you outside and left you, forgotten to, to open the door again and let you back in for 15, 20 minutes, and then, and then just be happy, just, just so happy to see them that your tail's wagging, it's, that's unconditional love. You know, it, it really is. And, and uh, it, dogs, it, dogs are just great. They can teach us so much about patience, devotion, loyalty, and unconditional love. I think humans, I think every person, well, not every person, because I think there's some people that just shouldn't have dogs, but I think most every person should have, everybody could learn something from from a dog. They, they really could. Don't you agree? I, I think so. Um, National Cleanup Day is third Saturday, September. It's National Cleanup Day. Okay, so there is one more day uh, today. <clears throat> today is also another special day. And can you guess what it is? I gave you all a hint in the in the. Let me check the uh, chat real quick. If nobody. Lee is in the chat. Lee, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you around for a while. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Lee, uh, who um, is another podcaster and who uh, I've got to get to know at Podfest. Uh, dogs are awesome. I love mine. Lee, yes, dogs are great. Lee, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Anything going on uh, Twitch? Uh, not not too much on Twitch at the moment. And, but anyway, getting back to the National Days. Today is one National Day that uh, we shouldn't forget, right? Because today is our... Talk like a pirate day. It is. Yes, it is. Today is September 19th, 2020, is Talk Like a Pirate Day. And uh, my daughter asked me, she said, um, before the show, she said, are you going to talk like a pirate the whole show? And I said, well, no, not the whole show. She says, I think you should talk like a pirate at the beginning of the show. But I said, no, because if I did that, then it would give away... The surprise of what day it is. Talk like a pirate day. As if anybody really cares, but some people do. And it's a lot of fun. Come on. It's our talk like a pirate day. Right? And uh, we, we all let's all talk like pirates. Yes, today is talk like a pirate day. And uh, so that brings me to the, the thing I was going to show you earlier. <clears throat> In honor of talk like a pirate day... No, I'm not going to drink any rum. I'm not going to have... I like rum, but I'm not going to drink rum today. But I do have the next best thing. I have... Ooh. I have this bottle. If you're familiar with the brand. I have this commemorative bottle of Pirate. Pirate. It's Pirate Rum. This is Pistol. This is the Pistol Edition. Pirate rum is kind of a commemorative one. Uh, this now this is not the one that now currently it is it is made uh, by another company, and I think it's made in uh, I'm trying to th I can't remember exactly where it, where it's made, but it's in. Uh, but this is the one from this is the old one. This is the one of the last bottles I think from the uh, Anguilla Rums Limited. And this is an imported rum uh, bottled in Anguilla, British West Indies. So this is a bottle of rum from the Caribbean. And uh, this, is, uh, this is actually imported uh, to, by uh, the Patron Spirits Company in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. But this is a commemorative one. Uh, okay, this is how I obtained it. No, I'm not going to go with that. But I'll just say that I've had this bottle 
for uh, for about 13 years now. It's been a long time. This um, this Anguilla Rums Limited. Uh, I think that this whole thing was bought out by another company about uh, I want to say about uh, 12 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. It's been a while. But this was one of the last bottles, and uh, by the original Anguilla Rums Limited. I have not opened this. It is sealed. I don't plan to open it anytime soon. I'll have some rum, but I really don't want to open this because this, I think, at this point, is a collector's edition. It's 40% alcohol by volume, 80 proof in this seven. Uh, in this, excuse me, in this 375 milliliter bottle of pirate. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pirate rum. Okay, pirate rum. There it is, right there. <clears throat> and that's as much. I wanted to do talk like a pirate day with uh, with all the fanfare of of uh, the pirate gear. I was going to wear a bandana on my head and and uh, you know the patch over the eye and all that whole bit, but I didn't have any of that stuff. So I, I didn't do that. So I, I know I'll just have to settle for talking like a pirate. Arr, me matey. <laughs> anyway, so I'm glad uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad to talk like a pirate day on a Saturday night in the wine stream because I tell you what, as we get closer in down into the bottle of this fine wine, I'll be probably talking like a pirate more and more, more so than uh, you would probably like to the point where it really irritates you and irritates all of us and uh, just because <sighs> it's a wine talking. Molly's in the chat with us. Great to see you, Molly. I'm glad you're here. Always glad to see you here. Uh, Molly says, belated thanks for my toast do-over. I turned in late but started from the beginning. Well, I'm glad you're here. And uh, and look, this is, by the way, Molly is the one who recommended that I do this. Let me get the long shot here. But I had this and I had the decant. I did dec Molly, I did decant the wine as you suggested. I decanted the wine. Uh, it wasn't quite two hours, about an hour and a half. Is that okay? But uh, it's. Uh, I was going to decant it two hours, but I got caught up in doing the show notes that I really haven't followed very well. And uh, because this is a stream of consciousness show, by the way, but I did pour half of it in, the, in this fine decanter, this Galway decanter. And then the other half I have in this bottle. Now, one of the things I think that you suggested that I do would be to open this bottle and taste the difference. Is that is that correct? I think that's what you suggested that I do, is that I, I decant it two hours beforehand, use the decanted uh, wine to do the tasting with, and then do a taste test, trying out the difference between the decanted wine and the one that I had in the bottle. If I if, if I understood that correctly, uh, I think I did. I don't, I don't know if I did. But if that's right, then we'll go ahead and try that and see how that works. As a matter of fact, I have another, uh, another wine glass here that we can try this with. I have a couple, actually. I have a couple to choose from. I have the... Uh, I'm going to have to step back and get this. Uh, let's see. Oh, get both these glasses. From the back. Okay. I have this one. This is the, uh, this is my, <laughs> I'm going to get a close-up of this. This is, the, I don't know if you can read this, but it's, it says Lover's Paradise, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. This is the, this is a wine glass from Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Yes, there is a town in Pennsylvania in Lancaster County. Um, that's up in the farm areas, and that's up in, in the uh, uh, areas where, uh, the Amish country there, and that's also where one of my favorite places to eat of all time, uh, the, the Shady Maple Restaurant is there. The Shady Maple, it's actually a buffet, what a huge buffet, unbelievably huge. I love that place, and the food is just excellent. But uh, you can gain five pounds just going there. I'm, I'm just, I, it's unbelievable. Just going to that restaurant is just unbelievable. Anyway, this is from Lover's Paradise, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. And then, of course, I have my Sunset and Vine Genuine Crystal Wine Glass from Sunset and Vine. This is uh, from, uh, oh, no, this is not Genuine Crystal. This is actually a regular glass. I'm sorry. I thought I had the, uh, 
<laughs> thought I had a crystal glass there. Okay, this is a regular glass, not crystal. Uh, Sunset Vine wine uh, with altitude from Blowing Rock, North Carolina. They could choose either one. Let's go with the the uh, Intercourse Pennsylvania glass. I'm going to go ahead and try this. Pop open the bottle, and we're try we're we're going with Molly's recommendation here, and try because we do a lot of experimentation on this show. That's what the show's about, and we're going to try this. Now I'm going to have the decanted version. I'm going to try a little bit of the decanted wine. And actually, the farther down you get into the decanter, the better the taste. It's it's actually fairly good. A little dense, but it's it's really good. It's 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 when I say dense, I don't mean that bad way. It's just it's it's very very full bodied. <clears throat> So we'll try the one that's been in the bottle right now. Give me a whiff. I can still smell the blackberry in this wine and a couple other kinds of berries. Okay. The blackberry in there, I'm not getting the chocolate as much. That's the interesting thing. Let me get another taste of it. The oakiness is still there somewhat, but I'm not getting, um, and the tannin is there, the acidity is there, but I'm not getting the chocolatey taste that I was getting, or the pepper taste that I was getting before, that I was getting from this, this glass. So I would say that uh, this, this is probably... Um, I think, Molly, I think your recommendation was right on the money. I think it was right on the money. Uh, because you suggested I decant it. So this particular wine, which is, once again, a GSM, a Grenache, Syrah, and Rovitra blend, this particular wine really does need to be decanted somewhat for you to really appreciate a lot of the nuance, a lot of the other flavors in this wine. I, uh, I, I concur with that. Good call, Molly. Good call, and I appreciate that. I do. It was an excellent recommendation. Thank you. And you know what, Molly? I'm going to toast you one more time. Ed says, would the aerator help the bottle? It might. It might help the bottle a little bit. But I think what it needs is not just uh, aeration. <clears throat> now, the, the difference between the, uh, between the aeration and decanting it is that with the aerator, what you're doing is you're introducing the air into the wine, mixing it in, getting that, you know, trying to open up the flavors in the wine right there. And you do get that. You do get that. What decanting the, does, though, is it gives the wine a long time to breathe for, for that oxygen, not just for the oxygen to get in there, but for it to just kind of have a chance to just really, really, uh, I guess maybe, I don't want to say mature a little more, but, but really get the, the uh, to really let it breathe. I mean, the, uh, aeration is what you do if you can't do decanting. Uh, if, if, if you're not going to decant the wine, a lot of wines really should be decanted. There's some that you don't need to, but there are some that you really should decant. And if you can't spend a lot of time opening up bottles of wine and, and spending, you know, leaving them out for an hour or two to, to, to decant, uh, then the aerator, the, the job of the aerator is, is really there to kind of introduce the the uh, air into the wine and the oxygen in to get it oxygenated and get it uh, kind, of, kind of stimulate the wine. But if you can, you really kind of want to air, uh, excuse me, you want to decant it somewhat. For some wines, some wines, the, the uh, for a lot of wines, having the aerator, and this is the one we're talking about here, it's sufficient. It, you, you know, for, for, uh, for using the aerator on a lot of different wines, this is sufficient to get things going. Um, however, there are some wines, there are some wines 
that the aerator isn't really going to be sufficient for that you really want to open that up and decant it and let it sit out and let it let it do its thing and um, this is one of those wines and apparently yeah this this is one of those wines that really uh, works better uh, with decanting probably than aeration so uh, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well I don't know if I explained it uh, uh, all that great but it's it's just kind of a it's an every man's explanation for for that between uh, aeration and uh, and decanting. Uh, aeration does help, it does. But uh, decanting is when you have a wine that's somewhat aged, it's somewhat. Now this this is a 2019, so I can't say that uh, you'd probably. It, it tastes fine. It tastes fine. I would just say if this is one of those wines that if you wait, and I might get a couple more bottles of this just to, to try try this out. But this is one of those wines that uh, if you uh, set aside and store for maybe a year or two, a couple of years, and then decant it, I think then it would, you might have something really, really awesome. So, um, but yeah, I, it's a good wine. I, and, and I'll tell you what, the French... The French know their wines. There's no doubt about it. The French know their wines. They've been doing it for centuries. They've been doing it for millennia. The French are expert with wines. And uh, they're not the only ones, of course. I mean, um, Italy. Italian wine, and that's a different thing. You know, you've got French wines, you have Italian wines, two different styles, that kind of thing. But um, uh, Italian wines, I love Italian wines. And uh, the Italians... They make some great wines. Argentina, uh, they have their own thing going with wine, and they've got the, they really they also really really know their wines. A lot of them do. Um, the, 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 some art, uh, some wines from Argentina are just are are excellent. Uh, I t I have developed quite a taste for Pinotage wines, which is from South Africa. That's their own that's their own grape and. Uh, I, I'm really impressed with what they've done with Pinotage. It's it's very very good very good stuff. Um, some German wines are good. I like some German wines. Um, there are some that I I was not impressed with as with others. I think Germans do good with beer. I I really I honestly I, German wines are great. Some of them are are uh, are, are really really good. But I really think that the Germans. The the uh, their their um, I, I want to say that their skills are really more with beer than with wine, and they come out with some fabulous beers. Germans can the, the Germany can come out with some excellent beers, uh, really really fine beers. Um, and Ireland too. The Irish Irish beer, oh boy. There's some Irish beers that are just just awesome. They're great. They really are. Um, I wouldn't. I would. I would say I would go with an Irish beer before I would say. Well, Ireland doesn't. I don't know. They really do wine so much. And that, their thing is their forte is more with beer. Okay. And then there are some other countries that uh, really probably excel better with maybe stronger spirits. Like uh, you know, I'm talking about. Vodka, Russian vodka and things like that. I mean, that's what uh, Russia is known for. It's a, a lot of their vodka and, and uh, things like that. But um, when it comes to wine, I think the French are still still uh, right up there. French and Italian wines uh, are up there uh, in, in top spots, in my opinion. In my opinion. Now, okay, I know I'm in the U.S., California wines. There's a lot to be said for California wine. I am not dissing California wines in the slightest, okay? There's a lot of these. And in California, they've done some fabulous things with wine. They have. But I, I will say that uh, uh, the French, the Italians, um, and I'm part Italian, actually, so maybe there's a little bias there. I don't know, because I love Italian wine. I grew up on that. That's how I was raised. I was weaned. I was almost literally weaned on Italian wine. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, my sisters can attest to that, because they were too. Uh, and I've shown you the pictures before. Uh, but, uh, you know, Argentinian wine, South African wines, 
uh, some wines from, uh, oh, wow, well, we have a whole bunch of wines here from other, other places that, uh, Australian wines. Australia uh, does some great things with wine. They really do. Um, uh, Australia uh, does some, some fabulous things with wine. So there are a lot of countries. Everyone has their, their forte. Everyone has their, their strength as, as far as uh, the type of wine. And, uh, and I enjoy them. I enjoy them all. And, and I'm, glad, I'm glad that it's here. I'm glad there is wine. <laughs> we can uh, do away with a lot of other stuff in this world, but please don't take away the wine. <laughs> keep the wine. Let's keep the wine flowing. Yes. So, and that's not just the wine talking. It is somewhat, but it's not just the wine talking. That's yeah, me too. So, uh, Lee says, good to see you too, Rick. It's great. It's always great to see you, Lee. Um, anything else going on in the chat? It's kind of quiet in the chat. We're going to probably end this pretty early because we're getting close to the end of it. Look, uh, it is still our talk like a pirate day. Um, did I get into the, to the days for tomorrow? I, I think, uh, September, tw uh, September 20th, September 20th is fried, a uh, national fried rice day. I like fried rice. It's also national pepperoni pizza day. I like, um, I don't eat pork pepperoni, but I do like turkey pepperoni and it's pretty good. I like national pepperoni pizza day, national punch day. And I think they're talking about the punch you can drink, not the punch that somebody punches you with, uh, uh, so I, I th National String Cheese Day. I didn't we toast that one last year? We toasted that one last year, didn't we? National String Cheese Day. Yeah, I'll, uh, string cheese is okay. Oh, and there's one more. I can't forget. I can't forget. I knew there was a reason why I had to get to back to the national days. There is one more day that I cannot absolutely not forget, or else I would hear about it later. And that is tomorrow, uh, September twentieth, is. National Wife Appreciation Day. And it is the third Sunday in September, which is uh, tomorrow in about 28 more minutes, 27 and a half more minutes. National Wife Appreciation Day. And I want to take this moment out. Here he goes again. I want to take this mo uh, moment out to, to say that I do, uh, I want to say thank you to my wife, my lovely wife, Chi, who's not only done this, who not only created this wonderful platter of uh, food to, to taste with the wine. Excuse me. Uh, not only uh, gave me that wonderful platter of food to, to, to uh, taste with the wine, uh, but has also put up with everything that I've done for the last 26 years we've been married and before that when we were dating. Um, it's, it's just amazing. She amazes me in so many ways. She um, she inspires me in so many ways. Uh, she she knacks me in so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I call her. When we're out on traveling around. I call her my navigator. She's my navigator. Uh, nav navigate. Na okay. Um, <clears throat> but no, no. Seriously, and I do that. I say that in a loving way. In a loving way. Not never. My wife is is really awesome she's just really awesome she she's a tough cookie she really is she tough she can be really tough with me but i sometimes i need it sometimes i really just need that and if i didn't have my wife without her i don't know i don't know where i'd be right now i probably wouldn't even be alive i'd probably been dead a long time ago she is uh, so much of me and so much a part of my life and so much um, she, she is, I mean, she's, she's, she's half of me. And, and, uh, uh, I'd say my, that my, my wife overall, I've, I've seen her do some amazing things. She's done amazing things in the kitchen and uh, we've, sh we've shown some of that in the wine stream in the past. She's done so many amazing things for, uh, for, uh, for me, for our kids. She's made things happen that I didn't think could ever really happen. <clears throat> she's made things come together that to, to, when they needed to come together and, and, and happen. And I, I'm like, how did she do that? Just, she just, she's just amazing. She's awesome. And she's the type of person that you can, and I think I've mentioned this before, you can open up the fridge 
And I can open up the fridge and I can see three or four items in the fridge. And, you know, and I'm thinking, well, what am I going to make for dinner? And I'm completely lost. And I have four items in the fridge. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go out and, and, and I'm going to have to order out or something. Or I'm going to go down to McDonald's or something to get something to eat because i got nothing in the fridge. She's the type of person that can open up the refrigerator, see those same four items, the same four items, and she can whip up a meal with them. She can whip up a meal with them. And it's not just stuff. It's not just something to eat. She can whip up a really nice meal with them. I think that right there is is not just awesomeness, but it is a real talent. It's a gift. It's a gift. And she does really, she's just amazing with that. So I want to say uh, to National Wife Appreciation Day, I appreciate my wife in more ways than, more ways than she can imagine. Um, I don't always sh- show it but uh you know uh, but i do appreciate her Uh, so here's the national wife appreciation day that's for my wife and that does it for the national days so um i think that kind of does it for the show tonight uh molly says uh molly says great to hear your take on the wine we don't get that often in the store Due uh, to the t- depth you take it, sounds like it could be decanted away in advance. I'll make a note of that for future customers. Well, uh, Molly, I appreciate that, but that was that's really that was really your recommendation because if it was up to me, if it was not for you, um, and this is why I appreciate each and every one of you here in in the chat who who are part of this, who are part of this show. Once again, I've said many many times before, this show is not about me. Although I do tell stories and things like that on the show for enter- to entertain you, the show is not really about me, and it's somewhat about the wine because you know it's drink with Rick. We're drinking you know things and, and and we're drinking the wine, but it's really this is really a show about you and me, about us getting together and collaborating and dr- you know drinking about uh, wine or whatever it is that we drink. You don't have to drink wine. You can drink whatever you want. You can drink water if you want, and just having a good time. Just having a good time. Putting aside. Everything else that goes on in this world, and there's so much that we have to put aside in this world right now. There's just so much. But just you know, sitting back and just getting together and drinking wine, because that's what, uh, as uh, what uh, another great uh, person said before, that's what uh, wine does. Wine brings people together, and I truly believe that. I believe that in my heart of hearts. I believe that wine brings people together, and it does. And uh, Molly, if you hadn't told me, if you hadn't suggested or recommended that I decant this wine, I would have just done this. I just would have just opened the bottle of wine, stuck the aerator in, and just uh, would have been uh, that. That would have been the end of it. I just would have done that. But because I took the time to aerate this wine for, from your recommendation. Uh, the wine was actually better. I, I, and we tasted it. We taste tested it. I tasted tested it here, and it is. It's it's so much better here after the decanting. So I want to say thank you to, to Molly. So it's not me doing this. It's you. That was your recommendation. You were the one that recommended that I do this, and so it's that's not my doing. That's yours. So you get all the credit for that, <laughs> okay? You get all the credit for that. Um, and she says, don't worry, I'm still going to feed you breakfast. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> okay, and now Ed's reminding me about something. <clears throat> Would a ventriloquist dummy talk like a, uh, like a pirate? We got a few minutes. Well, uh, Ed's reminding me of something that uh, earlier this week, um, okay, it wasn't earlier this week, it was yesterday as a matter of fact. Okay, so Ed um, wrote a um, script. He wrote a, uh, a, a play, a short 10-minute play. It was part of a class. And it, to be honest, Ed, I'm sorry, but I, 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 uh, I had the, the notes here for that, and I completely lost the notes. You have to remind me who it was that, that conducts the class. But it was, it was a class that was conducted that, uh, that Ed took part in that, uh, for, for uh, playwriting. And uh, it's not the first thing that Ed's ever written. I mean, Ed wrote a script for me a long, long time ago. I think I mentioned that before, where he wrote a script uh, for when I was considering doing some kind of animation that uh, he wrote a script for uh, uh, based, on, based on Hercules. 
and uh, <clears throat> and it was a fine script. I, I really enjoyed it, but uh, it was just something that was kind of beyond my capability to animate. It was my cap. It was beyond my capability. It's not. It was not beyond Ed's capability to write it because he he wrote it and he went to the, all that trouble to, wrote, to write it and and I read it and I enjoyed it, but it was just beyond my capability to animate it. Um, but uh, Ed, uh, you were in the what? What's the who was the conducting the class again? I forgot. And and uh, anyway, they. It was a uh, it was a course that they, they were doing, I believe, if I'm correct here, um, and uh, they I think one of the things they had to do was that, that it was a workshop, basically a workshop, and the instructor um, at the end of the workshop they um, were all supposed to write a uh, short uh, play and then perform it. Now this is the interesting thing about performing the, the this play is that concerning the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic and everything, uh, the play was performed. It was a virtual performance. It wasn't performed in, you know, on a stage. It was a, it, it was a reading. Actually, it was really more like a reading, right? There were the last draft. I think it was called the last draft, the last draft reading. And the uh, play was performed online. And I think they were doing this with, uh, I was watching on Facebook, but I think it was either in, in a Zoom or, or, or something, but it was, I think it was a Zoom connection. But uh, they got together and all of the actors and actresses would do this reading of, the, of these various plays online, a virtual performance. I thought it was very, very, um, the, the whole concept was very interesting, fascinating. You know, to see this reading of, of, of various plays. I think I had four, four of them, I think. Um, and they would have uh, people get on there and perform or, or do a virtual uh, performance reading of, of each of these plays. Ed wrote one, and he wrote one that was, uh, was actually really clever. He wrote one about, uh, and I don't want to give it away yet. <laughs> Search Final Draft Orlando YouTube. Yes. Uh, go to, Ed, I tell you what, if you could put a link to it, put a link to it in the show notes. Everybody could watch this. Everybody could watch it. I, I'm pretty sure it's still up there, right, on YouTube. Uh, just, Ed, just feel free to just go ahead and put a link to it in there so everybody could watch it after the fact. And I'll add it. I'll add a link to it in the show notes for the podcast. I think that would be great. Um, so... Uh, they, they they did this live performance uh, online, a virtual performance, and uh, I thought that was pretty pretty cool. It was it was unique. It was a, a little bit uh, French, <laughs> you say, uh, if you don't mind me saying so. It, it was it was it was kind of French, unique. It was refreshing. It was refreshing. It was really nice. I enjoyed it. Now, Ed did this play, and I'm not going to give it all away because I'd like you to go to watch it. Ed, Ed'll put up a link in there but to it. But go go watch the performance. And um, there were four performers in there. Ed was the writer. He was the, the, the playwright. It was, I think it was a 10-minute, 10 10-15 minute uh, play. And it says six plays. It says six plays. So there were six plays in total. In total, I had to bail after the fourth one because um, after yours, and there was one more after yours. I had to, to bail after the fourth one because uh, she was calling us downstairs to eat dinner. It was way past my dinner time, so um, I had to, to to bail after that. But there were I saw saw four of them, and uh, Ed was the third one uh, that that was performed. Uh, Ed's play, and he wrote this um, this play, and uh, it was about ventriloquists. It, it was about ventriloquists and their dummies, and, and two ventriloquists and two dummies. And uh, like I said, I don't want to give this, any of this away. Okay, go watch it. Go watch it. But uh, it was it was really cute. It, it was I really uh, enjoyed it, and uh, I thought it was really refreshing, especially especially these days when there's so much. You know what? The, the one of the things that I really want to commend you on, Ed, and uh, I'm, I'm going to toast you as well. This is to Ed. Ed and his play. I want to say here's to you and the play. 
one of the things that I really liked about this play, and and especially in comparison to some of the others, was that um, Ed's was clean. It was it was clean. It was for all ages. It was a safe. To, you can you can watch this with your kids. It was safe to watch. It was clean. Um, some of the other ones uh, had some words in there I wouldn't repeat, and uh, that, that had some uh, some uh, topics I don't know if I'd go into. But his was he took approach of this is something everybody could watch. Everybody, you know, it was something everybody could relate to, but it's something everybody could watch, all ages. And I thought that was cool. It says uh, it's up there. My play starts 15 minutes in, so it's 15 minutes in. So get, get a chance. Um, uh, check the link out. I'll, I'll see if I can locate a link and stick it on the uh, uh, for the podcast show notes. Check it out and and watch it. It was very refreshing to watch it. It it, it really was. And uh, so Ed, here's uh, I want to did I toast you. Again? I'll toast you again. Here's to you. Anyway, so um, I think that's got it for the show tonight. Uh, I think, let's see, anything else? Any Okay. Any other uh, comments on Twitch? Kind of quiet on Twitch tonight. And Madalus, uh, Madalonis, how do you pronounce that? Madalone Asan Jr. Sorry, it is the line kicking right now. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all I got tonight. Oh, there is one more thing. There is one more thing. As Columbo would say, just one more thing. You like Columbo? I love Columbo. It's just classic. One of my, I think one of the greatest detectives of all time, of all time, Columbo. Peter Falk. Uh, let's see, where was I going with this? Oh, yes. Two things, two things. One, uh, I just want to let you remind everybody, because being a, you know, of course, where this is talk like a pirate day. Arr! We're talking like a pirate, we be. Okay, uh, enough of my bad pirate impression impersonations. I can do impersonations. Uh, you know, when is it going to be, uh, I don't know, talk like a used car salesman day? I could do that. Use, talk like a used car salesman day. Uh, <laughs> not that we'd want to. Have I heard enough of them, right? Um uh, Talk like a meteorologist day. I could talk like a In fact, let me talk like a meteorologist for just a moment or two because I, I do want to, that's a terrible segue, but I do want to, to remind you that we have, we had Hurricane Sally coming through last week that hit uh, up around New Orleans, Nolens, as it's called. We got some of the rain up here, not as bad as we thought we would, but we got some of it up here in North Carolina, the western part of the state. Um, we got more hurricanes. We got more storms coming. They're just cranking them out. They're just cranking them out off the coast of Africa. Just cranking them out. And uh, there's another one on the right. Now we've run out of hurricane names, right? We've run out of names for hurricanes. So now we're going to. So what happens? Uh, I think it was my daughter. Somebody asked me that the other day. I think it was my daughter that asked me. Uh, what. What happens when you run out of names from the alphabet? Because they go through the alphabet. Uh, what happens when you run out of names for hurricanes? Well, what happens is, and I'm speaking now from uh, the perspective of, of someone who is a uh, uh, trained uh, weather spotter and uh, ham radar operator, uh, what happens is that you go to the Greek alphabet. You run out of names uh, in, in the in the uh, uh, in the alphabet, and you go to the Greek alphabet. So now we're up to, and, and here's the thing, though. Right now, currently, we're not at Hurricane Alpha. We're at, we're coming up to Tropical Storm and potentially Hurricane Beta. Okay, so this is how fast we're going through these names. Uh, Hurricane Beta. So that's heading up, and they're saying the last I heard, and I got the last report uh, sometime this afternoon, and they're saying that this could hit the Gulf Coast. It looks like it's aimed at the Gulf Coast sometime next week, okay? So we all have to be on guard for this. 
Now, in the meantime, my sister Gina, who's out on the West Coast in California, reported last night. She reported that, uh, or was it early this morning? I think it was early this morning. She reported a hurricane, uh, not a hurricane, a uh, earthquake, an earthquake in California. Another earthquake in California. So we're, we're getting hurricanes, we're getting earthquakes, we're getting all kinds of natural disasters. What I really implore you at this point, and that's we are still in hurricane season. We're still in the season for storms. Uh, what I implore you to do, please go to ready.gov. That's R-E-A-D-Y dot G-O-V. That's a government website, okay, U.S. government website, ready.gov. Look down the list of uh, look for hurricane preparedness and storm preparedness and and uh, disaster preparedness. Get yourself an emergency kit. Put together an emergency preparedness kit. Please have one. Everyone should have one. We have one. Everyone should have one. An emergency preparedness kit. Number three on the list is an emergency weather radio. Now, I think uh, farther down the list, I think it's five or six, is to get a two-way radio, like one of these that I have here. I have a two-way radio. But please get, at the very least, get an emergency weather radio. And I have one of these here as well. This is a, this is a Midland uh, ER-310 uh, emergency weather radio. And uh, it's, uh, it even has a dog whistle on it. And it's solar-powered, too. This has a number of different power options you can... You know, crank it, crank power. You've got a couple of different kinds of battery power. You've got solar power on it. it tells the time. You've got a built-in uh, AM, FM radio. You've got a built-in weather radio with weather alerts. And it has a flashlight on it. And uh, you can actually do an SOS. So you can do a version of this flashlight with it. When it shines, it uh, does an SOS here. There you go. And I'm showing this to you. The SOS. Uh, it's it's an SOS light, but it also has a dog whistle on it, so they can find you in the rubble or whatever. If something hits a tornado or something, they can find you uh, with the dogs. Uh, yeah, it's just it has so many features on this thing. Anyway, um, go to uh, no, don't go there. Oh, we well, can go there, but not just right yet. Uh, <laughs> go to by radios.com They have. Weather radios, they have all kinds of radios. They have uh, ham radios, GMRS, FRS radios, they have business radios, marine radios, airband radios, all kinds of radios. We have air, we have all those radios here. Go to buy2wayradios.com, buy2wayradios.com. If you enter the promo code wine show, that's W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, wine show. If you enter the promo code wine show, you can save 5% off your entire order. 5% off your entire order. That includes anything. It doesn't matter what, what you buy there. 5% off your total order you can get uh, by using the promo code Wine Show, And that's just for you watching and listening to Drink With Rick. Now, for full disclosure, I am the product manager for Buy2WearRadios.com. I do not make any extra money doing this, okay? It's not a paid sponsorship. Yeah, I get to keep my job, uh, hopefully. We'll find out money. <laughs> Hopefully, I do. But uh, I, you know, it, it, I don't make any extra money doing this. Okay, I'm doing this as a public service for you, and because my boss said, my boss Danny, as a matter of fact, said, "Hey, offer your uh, your viewers and your listeners a promo code uh, to get five percent off." So that's what I did. So that's what we're doing. So uh, I'm just telling you that's. Uh, we can do that. This is for you. And this is really not to make us money because, look, we're making 5% less. You use the promo code, we're making less money because we're making 5% or less off the order. Um, this is for you. This is, this, this is because I want you to buy a weather radio. And, and look, if you don't go to us to buy it, just go somewhere and buy it. Get, get a weather radio. Get some kind of weather. Get some protection. Go put your emergency kit together at ready. You know, you get the list from ready.gov. Just be prepared. I want you to be prepared. I care about you. I don't want you to get caught up in the next disaster, whether it be a tornado, a hurricane, an earthquake, whatever it is. Uh, I don't want you to be caught up in the next disaster. I want you to be here next week. Please get be prepared. Just be prepared. 
Add me friend one in the chat. It's good to see you, add me friend one. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I said, sorry I couldn't make it. There was a mixed martial arts event. Uh, President was on speakerphone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, sir. Well, I'm glad you're here. And uh, add me friend one says, our hurricanes don't stop till November. So got time for more. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Absolutely correct. Um, uh, hurricanes, you know, here's the thing, thing about hurricanes. In 2005, I think it was, we had four of them. Well, we had uh, several of them rip through Florida. And that was one of the things that caused us to leave uh, later on. But uh, we had one of them that came through twice, actually. Took down half of our, uh, one, one part of our fence the first time. And came down, took uh, another part of our fence the next time it came through. Um, but uh, hurricanes don't stop because I tell you what, it wasn't until um, I, I think we kept the storm, uh, when, you know, the, the, we boarded up all the windows. We kept the plywood up on all the windows all through September and October. And it wasn't until November, it wasn't until the weekend of Thanksgiving that November that we took them down. The only reason we took them down was because we had people coming over for Thanksgiving and we didn't want to have all the, the, the windows boarded up. But that was the only reason we took them down. But until that point, we had just left them up. We said, you know, after the second one came through, we just said, heck, we're not just going to take these down. Just leave them up for the rest of the season. So that's what we did. We had, we had like uh, three months where we just had our windows boarded up in our house in Florida, in central Florida. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we went through a pretty tough, tough year that year. Um, so, no, they don't stop. They don't stop uh, till November. And sometimes uh, I think the last day of uh, hurricane season, November, that's when we had a hurricane come through on the last day. So it's right up to last minute. Admiral Friend one says you have to turn a lever to get power, uh, LOL. Uh, if it can cook a hot pocket, uh, that would be cool. So uh, anyway, we have, uh, where was I? Going back here. Uh, Ed says the whole YouTube show is a one hour. So it's one hour. Oh, well, we're trying to make it through the whole hour, but we were, uh, I, my wife was really calling me to dinner, so I kind of had to go. Anyway, though, I'm glad I got to see it, Ed. I really got to see it, and I want to congratulate you on it. It was a, a fine job. Good job done. Anyway, so it's about time to wrap this up. I want to thank everyone for being here with me tonight. Oh, yeah, there is one more thing. Just one more thing. Okay. Uh, next weekend, uh, this is the 26th, I believe. Okay, after that, it's the 29th. Uh, on the 30th is International Podcast Day. International Podcast Day is on the 30th of November. Uh, November, September. So, sounds like a bad SCTV uh, uh, sketch. The 30th of September is International Podcast Day. Um, the day before that, no, actually International Podcast Day kind of goes from the, tw the, the midday of the 29th through, through the end of the day, September 30th. So we're going to be just like I did last year. Last year, I did a 24-hour marathon, Drink with Rick marathon. This year, we're going to do something a little bit different. My son and I uh, are going to do uh, a little bit of a marathon for Savoia Media. Savoia Media is our overall website where we have all of our shows, Drink with Rick, Cube Command, the Free Stuff Show, all of that sort of thing, and then also our past shows that we've done. Now, this year, what we're going to do is we're going to do a crossover event. Um, he's going to come on Drink with Rick on the 29th because the 29th also happens to be my son Tommy's birthday. So he's going to come on a Drink with Rick on the 29th. And for the first time, he's going to do a wine tasting. He's going to taste wine. Now, what I mean by wine tasting is it's not that we're going to be tasting different wines. He's going to be tasting wine himself for the first time uh, because he's... Now, uh, or at least then, on the, on the 29th, he's going to be legally uh, able to drink. He's going to be legal to drink uh, alcohol. So we're going to do an official wine tasting 
with him, and he's going to try. I'm going to put a red, a white, and a rosé. Now, these are all going to be wines that, I, that we've tried before uh, or the equivalent of, of those. And we, so, so we know what they taste like, but we're going to, I'm going to open up a red, a white, and a rosé. I'm going to pour them for him, and he is going to taste wine for the very first time. And he's going to tell us what he thinks. This should be very, at the least, this should be very entertaining. So I, I hope everyone shows up for this. This is going to be a lot of fun. So my son Tommy's going to be here with me on Drink with Rick. And this is going to be a special one-hour event, a special one-hour event on um, on September, September 29th, 2020. Now, also... I'm going to do a crossover episode with him. He does a show called Cube Command, and he talks about gaming and uh, video games and pop culture, sci-fi, and things like that. So I'm going to be doing a show with him. I'm going to be his guest, and we're going to talk about sci-fi movies, classic sci-fi, and uh, my take on a lot of the classic sci-fi films and where science fiction has gone since then and, and where it's going and, and things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join us for that as well. Join his Cube Command podcast, uh, podcast for that. I'm a big sci-fi fan, and uh, it just doesn't it, uh, it's just not real limited to Star Wars and Star Trek and that kind of stuff. That's it to the whole genre. And uh, I love uh, talking about sci-fi, science fiction. Uh, I have my thoughts on a lot of that. And, uh, yeah, on the Sci-Fi Network, I have my thoughts on that, too. But you'll learn about that when we do the crossover episode on Cube Command. And that's going to be, he's going to be doing his Monday. I think that's the 28th is when his comes out. The day before we do the Drink with Rick special. So I hope you'll join us for all of that. It'll be a lot of fun. Also, we have been talking about him trying some beers. We might do a second episode on the 30th where he maybe tries some beers. So we'll see how that shakes out. We'll see how that works. Still uh, talking about that. But um, anyway, I hope you'll join us for all that. In the meantime, I think that's it for tonight. Finally is uh, it for the night. I want to thank everyone for being here with me. The final review, the final review on this, uh, on this wine. Of course, once again, we have been drinking. This is the, uh, Castier de, uh, 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 I can't even pronounce it anymore. You know what? I've had too much of this, haven't I? <laughs> Let me put up, though. Okay, there's the actual bottle, okay? It's the Costier de Nîmes. De Nîmes. De, yeah. Costier de Nîmes. It's pronounced Costier de Nîmes. Okay? I said it right this time. Costier de Nîmes. That's, what it's, that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, that's uh, the, the wine that we've been drinking. This is 14.5% alcohol by volume, and I think I've been feeling every 14.5% of it uh, at this point. It is a 2019. This is Edition Limite, which means it's a limited edition bottle of wine. It is a GSM. This is a GSM wine, which means it's a Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedra combo, and it's a blend. I don't know, to be honest, I do not know how much of each is in the blend. I have not been able to determine that. It doesn't say on the bottle. It hasn't said anywhere that I could find. I'm not sure what the actual combo, what the uh, percentages is in the combo. It could be any, but uh, that's what it is. It is a GSM wine. We have uh, tried it with some foods. We've paired it with a number of different foods tonight. Uh, I think it went pretty well with the uh, with the sausage, the beef uh, smoked sausage, and I think it pretty went really well with the beef brisket as well. Uh, not so much with the turkey, with the smoked turkey. I, I didn't, I wasn't surprised. I kind of didn't expect it to go well too well with the white meat. Although it did do better when I dipped it in the barbecue sauce. It was a tomato-based barbecue sauce. It did do better with that, but still, I would stick with the red meats. It uh, did pretty well with the cheeses. The brie was okay. The cheddar was good, and of course, the Trader Joe's double cream gouda, excellent as always, did really, really well with. Um, you'll want to decant this, uh, uh, as Molly suggested, you'll want to decant this about two hours before 
you serve it. I think that's probably the best way to go. I would decant it rather than using the aerator or just opening the bottle and pouring from the bottle. You can do it if you want, uh, but I think the decant uh, method is, is better, the decanting method. Also, this is not an hors d'oeuvre kind of wine. This is, if you're looking for something like that, you want to go with, uh, I mean, there are a number of wine, other wines that you could, uh, that, uh, that, that are better suited for that. This is a wine that you'll want to have, that you'll want to pair with dinner. This is a dinner wine, uh, in my personal opinion. This is a wine you want to have with dinner. So um, anyway, that's that's what the back looks like. I'm really I'm really impressed with this. I'm looking forward to putting this up on the shelf, and because I just I just I love this I love this label. It's really cool. I love the label is just really cool. Anyway, so I want to thank you for being here with me tonight. Um, I want to thank my lovely wife Chi, and I want to thank Ed for being here tonight. And Ed, you did a fine a fine job on your your play, Molly. As always, Molly, thank you for being here uh, tonight. Uh, it couldn't really, really have done this without you, actually. Uh, who else do we have here in the chat? Uh, CM Cinder, Tom Antio, Add Me Friend One is in the chat. Always good to see you. Uh, also, uh, Madeline S. Sun Jr. And uh, anyone else watching? You know what? I haven't really seen anybody watching on uh, YouTube tonight, but I've seen, I've seen people watching. I just haven't seen anybody in the chat. Not unexpected. And anyone who's been following me on Twitter, thank you for being here with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. You make the show. You're part of the show. That's that's what this is all about. Next week, uh, well, we got some surprises for next week. We'll see how that goes. But you know what's going to happen on the 29th, and I hope you'll be there to join us for that. In the meantime, I want you to have a great week, and I want you to have a safe week. If you want to comment on anything of the show, comment, uh, leave me, uh, send me a message, rick at savoyamedia.com, rick at s-a-v-o-i-a-m-e-d-i-a.com. Uh, send me your wine recommendations. Send me a free bottle of wine. I'll be happy to give it a fair review. If you any vintners out there, any um, any bottlers, uh, any, any uh, wineries out there, you want to send me a wine to review, I'll give it a fair review and honest review. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for being with me here tonight. Please do not drink and drive. Please drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your studio, your hotel room, wherever you are. Call an Uber or Lyft if you have to. Just please do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. That's another pet peeve of mine. Do not text and drive. Because I want you to have a safe week. And I want you to have a great week. So you can join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.